Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for being here today. This is a wonderful occasion, so I'm so happy to see all of you here. I'm Erin Daly. I'm the Interim Dean of Widener Law, Delaware. I'm thrilled to see everyone here this morning to welcome you all to this historic event in the life of the law school. In particular, I'd like to welcome to Delaware the members of the university's executive team, President James T. Harris III, Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs and Provost Stephen Wilhite, and Senior Vice President for University Advancement, Linda Durant. I would also like to especially welcome members of the Law School's Board of Overseers who've taken the time to be with us today. The Honorable Randy J. Holland, Justice of the Delaware Supreme Court, and a longtime adjunct and very good friend of the Law School. The Honorable Susan Del Pesco, retired from the Delaware Superior Court and an alumna of the Law School. Jean McGurk, a member of the University's Board of Trustees and Chairman of the Law School's Board of Overseers. Richard Herman, Visiting Professor of Law and Director of the Center for Law Practice Technology. John Wetzel, Dr. Kathleen McNicholas, Overseer and University Trustee. And John F. Schmutz, formerly General Counsel of DuPont and also a longtime supporter of the law school in ways too numerous to count. Also joining us today is Cynthia Kane, Special Assistant to the Delaware Secretary of State, as well as Chuck Proctor, Vice Chair of our Alumni Board. Welcome and thank you all for joining us here today. As you all know, this law school, originally known as Delaware Law School, admitted its first students nearly 45 years ago and was accredited by the American Bar Association in 1975. Since that time, we've undergone many changes, becoming a part of Widener University and then starting a branch campus in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, at which time we began using the name Widener University School of Law to reflect that we were no longer a Delaware-only institution. But as we stand here today, we are on the cusp of several more pivotal changes that bring with them a new world of possibilities and opportunities. So it's very exciting to be here with you all today. To tell you more about the changes now before us, please let me introduce to you Dr. James T. Harris III. Dr. Harris, not yet. <laughs> Dr. Harris, I'm going to introduce. <laughs> you have to understand there's not many more times I get to introduce him, so I'm going to give him a little bit of his due. <laughs> He is the ninth president of Widener University. Under his leadership, Widener has been recognized nationally for its academic excellence and community engagement. In recognition of his considerable contributions to education and to the communities he serves, Dr. Harris is the recipient of many awards and honors. In 2011, he received the Chief Executive Leadership Award from CASE, the Council for Advancement and Support of Education. Dr. Harris remains an active scholar and teacher. Two years ago, a book he co-authored entitled Academic Leadership and Governance in Higher Education was published by Stylus Publishing. For over 10 years, Dr. Harris has been on the faculty of the Harvard University Summer Institutes, where he works with future higher education leaders. As everyone knows, I'm sure Dr. Harris will soon be leaving us for sunnier climes. Under his leadership, Widener has become a stronger, steadier, and much more vibrant place than it was when he arrived, and certainly one with a stronger sense of mission and a confidence in its future. I know we're all very sorry to see him go, but in the meantime, we are delighted to have him with us here today. Thank you. Now you may stand. Thank you, Aaron, for that very kind uh, introduction. And I, I don't know if there's anybody happier about this announcement today than Aaron, because she finishes her duties as co-interim dean uh, at the end of June and has done a fabulous job. And I'll get to that in just a moment. So today, Aaron is absolutely right. Uh, we have much to celebrate on this special occasion. And I'm happy to be here with you with all our distinguished guests. It was just about a year ago that we started down this road of application for acquiescence before the American Bar Association and it's been quite a year. Today, I'm proud to announce officially what some of you may have gleaned through the grapevine, that the American Bar Association has officially approved our application for acquiescence to an organizational change, meaning that the ABA has given its official stamp of approval to allow Widener University to operate two separately accredited law schools. So congratulations, Delaware. Your second Independence Day is on July 1st.
and we will be officially known on this campus as White University Delaware Law School returning to the original name of the School of Law. As Delaware Law School, you will operate as one of eight schools within Widener University, and while you will operate independently of the law school in Harrisburg, we have plans to have the Delaware Law School collaborate with Harrisburg in the future. Uh, that school is now going to be known as Commonwealth Law School, as well as with other schools within the university and the central administration. What this will mean for students will be enhanced student services and educational offerings. In addition, we hope that independence will motivate more alumni who graduated from Delaware Law to become involved with the law school, and this increased alumni participation and involvement will benefit our students with more externship opportunities, more mentoring, and hopefully more professional connections that will help prepare our students for after graduation. You've told us repeatedly that the Delaware way of practicing law, which prizes civility and respect, is both a national model for how law should be practiced, it will now become an even more important part of Delaware Law School. As we become even better known for our embrace of the Delaware way, we can expect our students to be sought after by employers who will value the attributes they bring to the workforce. So my friends, as we begin to talk about the Delaware way, it's important that everyone at Widener walk the talk by embracing civility and respect in our relationships with others so that this becomes the hallmark not just of Delaware law, but of the entire university. Establishing the independence of the two law schools codifies the separate realities that have evolved over time. And this move will give each law school the dedicated leadership it needs to grow and to flourish. Our, law, our two law schools have developed different curricular approaches to legal education, and over time, they've grown to embrace unique programmatic strengths and identities. The official positioning uh, statement for Delaware reflects the strengths and unique position of this campus, and it now seems like an appropriate time to remind everyone of that, what we wrote uh, a few months ago with regard to the positioning statement. And it reads as such, strategically integrated into the distinct culture of Delaware's legal community, and with signature programs in corporate law, environmental law, family, health law, and policy, advocacy and technology, Widener University Delaware Law School, with its focus on hands-on learning and the faculty's thought-leading scholarship, is an unmatched educational environment from which to begin a legal career. Many of you, students, faculty, staff, participated in listening sessions that led to this positioning statement and to the new name of the law school, as well as the design of a new website, and I thank everyone for their hard work. A great deal of work did go into getting us to this point. The faculty and staff on the Delaware campus have worked diligently to make sure that the beautiful new Delaware Law website is up and running. It just was up and running two days ago. And it looks great, and if it wasn't for your hard work, uh, we wouldn't be able to be here in this position at this point. So I invite everyone to take a look at it at delawarelaw.widener.edu. And so, so many people participate in this. I wonder if I could ask the members of the website development team either to raise their hand or to stand up. Would you please do that? That's, please stand up, Barbara, come on. Recognize them for their great work. You don't want to stand up. Yeah, you're supposed to stand up, but that's okay. There are two people with us whom I'd like to recognize for their diligent shepherding throughout the ABA application process. Uh, Provost Steve Wilhite and Interim Co-Dean Aaron Daly. First, Provost Wilhite has been a model of measured reasoning, shared governance, and throughout this process. And I don't know without his leadership whether or not we'd be here today. He's been a, a, an advocate for Delaware law for so many years. We've been through a number of different uh, committee meetings and discussions with our colleagues. So I'd just like to have Steve please rise. And let's give him a round of applause for his fantastic leadership. And interim co-dean Erin Daly, if you'd please rise. And I want to thank her for her hard work this past year and pulling all the pieces together, stepping up at a time when we needed leadership on the campus. I want to thank you for your leadership, for your diligence, for all your perseverance in getting through this process. And I couldn't be more grateful for all of your strong leadership and your great work. So thank you very much. Earlier today, I was speaking with our oldest son, and he's participating in a draft uh, for the, where they have the, the draft for their baseball, they have their fantasy baseball teams. So I was asking him who would be his first draft pick. 
And I mention that because when we went through the search process, we were able to get our first draft pick. And we had a fantastic team that did that selection. I know that we have one of the co-chairs, Mr. Joe Baker, is not with us today, but Mr. Jim May, or Professor Jim May, and also members of the search committee. Would you rise, and let's give you a round of applause, and thank you for your great work on this. So today, it's my great pleasure to introduce the incoming dean of Wider University Delaware Law School. And we're very pleased that Rodney Smola has agreed to accept our offer uh, to be our next law dean. He has an exceptional record of both law school and university leadership, and to have him join Delaware Law is really a remarkable point in our history. He's a distinguished educator, scholar, and attorney. Professor Smola is currently a visiting professor of law at the University of Georgia Law School. He has previously served as the dean of the University of Richmond School of Law and Washington and Lee School of Law, as well as president of Furman University. He's authored and edited many books, and one of his books, Deliberate Intent, A Lawyer Tells the True Story of Murder by the Book, was made into a movie with Timothy Hutton. And he was, he played you, right? Yeah, that's great. <laughs> his book, Free Speech in an Open Society, won the William O. Douglas Prize, which recognized his contributions to freedom of speech. As an active litigator, he's presented oral arguments in state and federal courts throughout the nation, including the U.S. Supreme Court. I could say much more about this remarkable man, but one thing I don't want to get lost in my remarks is that he's also a tremendous teacher and a mentor. Literally this week at a meeting, I was in uh, Hershey, Pennsylvania for a meeting of independent colleges, and we had a sponsor there from a law firm in Harrisburg. And I asked the young man sitting at the table where he had attended law school. He said, oh, I went to the University of Richmond. And I said, well, tell me about your experience there. Did you have any special professors? And he went right to his very favorite professor, Professor Smolia, who said it was his, made law come alive in the classroom. So today, our new dean, I know our students, faculty, and the staff at the law school here are very excited to welcome to the Widener Delaware School, or Delaware, see I'm going to get mixed up, <laughs> Delaware Law School, Professor Rodney Smolia. Thank you all. Thank you all very much. Uh, thank you, President Harris. I appreciate very much that gracious introduction. Uh, I'll miss the opportunity of getting to work with you, but I know you'll do great things for um, San Diego, and you've already done wonderful things here at Delaware. And I also want to thank Senior Vice President and Provost Steve Wilhite, uh, who co-chaired this process and uh, with whom I've already enjoyed working and look forward very much to working. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Uh, Dean Aaron Daly has done a wonderful job of recognizing uh, so many of the folks that are here, but I want to especially thank the members of the board and the board of overseers who are here, and, and Gene and Richard, both of you participated in the search process, and I appreciate your being here. And I want to especially thank uh, Justice Randy Holland for being here. You all know Justice Holland as a, a wonderful friend of this law school and a member of this faculty. I, as an outsider from the, uh, Delaware, but soon to be moving here, uh, know him for his extraordinary not just national, but international um, reputation as a scholar and a leader of the profession and a wonderfully respected jurist. The state of Delaware is fortunate to have Randy Holland on its Supreme Court, and Delaware Law School is fortunate to have him as a faculty member, as a friend of the school, and I appreciate you coming here, Justice Holland. Thanks very much. Thanks to the members of the search committee who are here. You were wonderfully gracious to me during the process, and I feel so um, uh, fortunate that I will be uh, the dean here at the law school and get to strengthen our friendships. I want to very briefly talk to a number of different uh, uh, groups that comprise the community here. And I want to first talk to a group that I doubt is here in person, but perhaps through our friends with the broadcast media and print media and social media who will get this message, I hope you get to hear what I'm about to say. I want to talk to those prospective students who have offers to come to the Delaware Law School and who must make their decision in the next few days or weeks as to whether to come. And my message is, say yes. 
you will be first year law students here and I will be the first year dean here and we will have a special bond and I will look forward to being a mentor to you and a professor for you and an educator for you and I promise you if you come here you'll have one of the most extraordinary educations you could get at any law school in the United States and you will learn what it means to be a lawyer in the highest and best sense. And so I hope you come, and I'm going to take every opportunity I have in the next few days and weeks to encourage you to come and be part of this uh, terrific institution. <laughs> to the Delaware Law Law students who are here, I see a lot of you got the skybox seats. That's great. <laughs> That's for the big donors, right? <laughs> For those of you that are here, let me say to you, I'm looking forward to being your dean. For those of you that are in your third year now and about to graduate and take the bar exam, whether you're taking it in Pennsylvania or New Jersey or Delaware or any state in the United States, I'll miss being able to be your first-hand dean, but I'll be your dean vicariously and hope I'll be in touch with you and we'll be with each other over the years as you enter the profession. I do want to give you this message. <coughs> Whoops. You've worked hard, you've worked hard, and there's a real temptation to tag go here at the end. You'll finish your classes, take those final exams, and you'll want to just relax. <laughs> but you have one more big job to do, and that's to pass the bar exam, wherever it is. We want every single one of you to pass that bar exam, and we're going to do all we can to encourage you and support you in that. That's your ticket to this great profession. And so you've got a few more weeks to bear down after you have that celebration with your family members and friends and graduate. But that's your job, and I look, wish you the very, very best. To the rising third year students and rising second year students, I'll just say a few words to you. Uh, there's a wonderful old Army recruiting slogan that some of you folks remember. It was the Army's tagline for decades, I think, be all you can be. And that's my hope for you as the dean, to help you be all you can be as law students academically, continuing to master the legal doctrines and the legal theories that are important building blocks for any lawyer. But much more than that, I hope that you can be all you can be in acquiring the skills it takes to be a competent lawyer, indeed to be an excellent lawyer. The writing skills, the research skills, the skills in communication, the counseling skills, the negotiation skills, the advocacy skills that it takes to serve the members of the public that will have their most important matters entrusted to you. And finally, and really most importantly, I look forward to working with my faculty colleagues and the others that are part of the profession that assist us in our educational mission to helping you develop professionalism. And I mean more than that than just courtesy, although that's a wonderful, important quality in professionalism, and more than that than just civility. At its soul, professionalism is developing professional judgment and realizing that what judgment means is the taking of the doctrines that we've helped you master and the theory that we've helped you master and the skills that we've helped you acquire and using them to serve, using them to solve people's problems, to solve the problems of businesses, to resolve conflicts, to make positive things happen in society, and using them to give something back. As part of the launch of the new Delaware Law School, President Harris and others, you may know that there's a brand new website. And when you look to the faculty section of that website, you see that all the faculty members who are here have answered certain questions. And one of them is, what do I do to give back? And they each tell you in their own way. And that's an important part of what we're all trying to tell you as law students, that that's a critical part of what it means to be a lawyer in this society and a critical part of what it means to be a citizen in this society. To my faculty colleagues who are here, I'm looking forward to our collegial relationships, our professional relationships, to our dialogue as we grow as teachers and trade ideas with each other as to how we can be better teachers and mentors for these students. I look forward to encouraging you and supporting you in your research efforts and in your service efforts. This is a vibrant, intellectually alive, dedicated faculty, and I'm honored to be joining it. To the staff members who are here and to the broader administrative and staff members for their part of Widener University, I'm looking forward to working with you as your colleagues. I know you work hard. I know you've worked very, very hard 
in the harder times since 2008 in which every educational institution in the United States has been stretched and you've had to labor very, very hard and you've been diligent in that and you should be proud of that and have a sense of dignity about that and I'm looking forward very much to being part of that with you. To our alumni um, who are here and who are going to hear this message, I hope, whether you're in Pennsylvania or New Jersey or Delaware or any of the states in the region or anywhere in the country, um, as an old Chicago boy, let me, let me tell you, I promised to, um, to do um, what we were taught to do when we voted, to, to visit you early and often. <laughs> I'll be tirelessly out there uh, getting to know you, getting to learn about your careers and your lives, soliciting your advice on legal education, your advice on how we recruit students, your advice on how we f help students find meaningful positions and, and careers. I look forward to enlisting your help in supporting the school and leading the school. And finally, let me end by talking to the broader profession. And of course, I mean the lawyers who that are part of the broader legal communities that this great law school is part of, uh, communities that extend across a number of states. But I want to particularly talk about those members of the bench and the bar, several of whom are here, um, that practice in Delaware. Delaware Law School is the only law school in Delaware. And that creates a special fiduciary relationship, a special form of partnership and bond with the legal system of this state. Many of the lawyers who have distinguished themselves in practice in this state, many of the justices and judges and chancellors on the Court of Chancery that are part of this state did not go to the Delaware Law School. But as my first act as dean, <laughs> I want to make you all honorary members and honorary alumni of the Delaware Law School in a serious sense. We're partners together in a unique way. You went to law schools from all over the country and you're proud of those schools and you're loyal to those schools, but this is the only law school in this state. And as the only law school in this state, we have a special responsibility as you have a special responsibility to the progress of the system of this state, to providing for legal services for those that cannot afford it, to serving the state in legal education, continuing education, to helping be a forum for the constant evolution of the law of this state, and for serving in partnership with all of you that are members of the Delaware Bar as a civic good, a sense of public responsibility to the people of the state. This is one of the smaller states in the United States, but it projects an influence on the law of the United States and on the law of the world vastly disproportionate to its size. Because of the extraordinary influence of the Delaware Code of, of, of Corporate Law, the influence of the Court of Chancery here, the fact that 50% of all the companies in the United States are Delaware corporations and 60% of the Fortune 500 companies are Delaware corporations, means that any literate lawyer in the United States or in the world has got to understand the evolution of Delaware law on that topic. And it is looked to as a model and it has enormous influence on the fabric of our society. But as President Harris has already mentioned, if that is a beacon, there's a more important beacon, and that is this notion of the Delaware Way, which is not a slogan to folks around here. It is deeply embraced as critically important. It is a sense of civility, of bipartisan problem solving, of an approach to the practice of law that puts the public interest and in one's duty to the court as an officer of the court first above everything else. That is a beacon worth exporting. That is a beacon that matters whether your area of practice is domestic relations law or constitutional law or environmental law. That is an approach to professionalism that this school is very proud of. And I'm proud to be the dean that will work with my faculty colleagues, with the staff, with students, with alumni, and with the larger members of the profession in pursuing the Delaware Way. Thank you for the honor of being here, and I look forward to meeting you and having a friendship.
President Smola, just a small token of appreciation and thank you. We are thrilled to have you as our new dean and look forward to the great things that are going to happen under your leadership. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for the and we're available to answer any questions that people might have. I think he gives the better answers, but. Well, I don't know how your brackets are doing, but um, <laughs> there, are some, <laughs> there, are, there are some things that I'm good at, in it, but, but not picking the NCAA Final Four. <laughs> you have any comments from anybody in the audience? If not, like well, please. Congratulate John. Yeah, the dean will be around to meet everybody, so let's please uh, break bread and uh, have a good time. So congratulations. <laughs>